In the previous block, I showed you how to calculate the maximum rate of climb. We discovered that in order to climb as fast as possible in terms of time, the pilot should apply maximum power and fly at the airspeed for maximum excess power. In case of an idealized propeller aircraft, with constant maximum power as a function of airspeed, this situation can in fact be solved analytically. In that idealized situation, the maximum excess power is present at the minimum power required condition. Now imagine that we have an aircraft without engine thrust, a glider. Now this aircraft has zero thrust at all flight speeds and also zero power available at all flight speeds. So if we go back to the performance diagram, the maximum power curve is in fact a straight line, just like the idealized propeller engine, but now on top of the x-axis. Power available minus power required will again be maximum in the minimum power required condition. In fact, it is a negative value now, but at all other flight speeds it is even more negative. So what does this actually mean? If we have zero thrust, the aircraft will be performing a gliding flight. It is descending. The flight path angle is defined as being positive when climbing. So the maximum rate of climb in a gliding flight is in fact the same as the minimum rate of descent. Now this rate of descent indicates at which time the aircraft will hit the ground. So this means if, that if we want to glide as long as possible, we should fly at the airspeed for minimum power required. And this situation is quite relevant for recreational flight in a glider, because it maximizes the time you can spend flying. Now this glider has the properties as indicated on the slide here, and is flying at approximately 1000 meters altitude. You can see by its properties that it's actually quite a small aircraft, and it has only 10 square meters of wing surface area and it has a fairly small weight combined with a parabolic lift drag polar. So now let's calculate for this aircraft the minimum rate of descent in order to fly as long as possible and enjoy climbing or enjoy flying. So we have an equation for the rate of climb, which is the negative of the rate of descent, and it's equal to power available minus power required divided by the aircraft weight. Now, of course, the aircraft does not have power, so this term equals zero, and we can rewrite this as being minus drag times velocity, which is power required, divided by the aircraft weight. Now before I continue with this equation, we should note that, of course, the second equation of motion states that lift should be equal to weight. So I can also state that drag is equal to drag times lift divided by lift. So this is a little trick because this whole term is equal to one. But for this special situation, in fact, lift is equal to weight, so I can also say that this is drag divided by lift times the aircraft weight, which is CD over CL times the weight. So this little trick I'm doing here just makes the calculations much quicker. So this means that I can also write the rate of climb equation as minus CD over CL times the weight, and that multiplied with the airspeed. But let's have a second look at our lift is equal to weight equation. Lift is of course CL times a half rho V squared S, which equals the weight. So the airspeed is in fact the square root of weight over s times 2 over rho and 1 over cl. So we can insert this airspeed equation in our rate of climb equation and then we get the following. Weight over s, 2 over rho, 1 over cl and of course we have to divide the whole equation by the aircraft weight. Now you can immediately see 
that these two weight terms can be removed. And in order to write it a little bit simpler, I can also put the CD over CL inside the square root. So what I then get is that rate of climb equals weight over S times 2 over rho times CD squared, because I had a CD outside the square root, divided by CL to the power 3, because I had a CL outside the square root and already a CL inside the square root. So this means that in order to get maximum rate of climb, or in other words, minimum rate of descent, we should have maximum CL to the power 3 divided by CL squared. Because of course the aircraft weight is constant, the wing surface area is constant, 2 is a constant term, and we're actually looking at flight at one specific altitude at one point in time. So we need to maximize this relation. And we already know that we have a parabolic lift drag polar, which is CD is CD0 plus K1 CL plus K2 CL squared. Now, in order to find this maximum, we have to take the derivative and equate it equal to zero. But we already did that in a previous lecture. So if you cannot remember how this worked, I would like to encourage you to have a second look at the video about maximizing endurance, which also occurred at flying at the minimum power condition. So the optimum CL, which we have to fly at to achieve minimum rate of descent, is equal to K1 plus minus the square root of, let me write that one again, K1 squared plus 12 K2 CD zero, and that whole term divided by two times K2. Now we already have several values for our example glider. So let's write down what these are. It will state that CD zero is equal to 0 0.012, K1 is equal to zero, and K2 is equal to 0 0.02. So if we take all these values and we insert them into this equation for the optimum CL, we actually find that CL is equal to 1 point three four. Okay? So this is the CL, and of course the pilot would like to fly at this optimum CL, but based on this we can also calculate at which airspeed he or she should fly. So if we take the optimum CL, we can calculate that the optimum airspeed is equal to the square root of the weight of the aircraft, which was 4000 newton, divided by the wing surface area, times 2 over the air density, which is 1.1116 1 at 1000 meters altitude, times 1 over this optimum CL, and this should equal 23.2 meters per second. 
So now we are almost at what we try to achieve. We try to find what the minimum rate of descent is. So we already know the optimum airspeed and we know the optimum CL. Let's now use these in order to find what is the minimum rate of descent. Now if I have CL, then I can use that to calculate CD, since the drag coefficient is a function of the lift coefficient, following the lift drag polar. So CD is CD0, which in case of our glider aircraft is 0.012, plus K1 times CL, but K1 is 0, plus K2, which is 0.02 times CL squared, which was 1.34 squared, and that gives us a CD of 0.048. Now if we have the CD and we have CL, we can actually calculate the rate of climb in this optimum condition, which was in fact this equation, square root weight over s, 2 over rho and cd squared over cl to the power 3. So if we insert all numbers, then we get 4000 for the weight, 10 for the wing surface area, 2 over the air density, we get cd squared and CL to the power 3 and if we work it out we'll find that the optimum rate of climb is in fact equal to minus 0.83 meters per second. So the aircraft is going down but it's going down at a fairly slow pace, so it will take a long time before the aircraft will hit the ground. So, summarizing, if the lift drag polar, aircraft weight and air density are known, the minimum rate of descent can be calculated. Now, a heavy aircraft will go down much faster than a light aircraft. In addition, the air density also plays a role. A small air density, for example, will result in a larger airspeed for a given descent angle simply because the aircraft has to fly faster in thin air to create sufficient lift. So when an aircraft gets closer to the ground, the descent rate will become smaller because the air density becomes larger. So if you would want to calculate the total time it takes for an aircraft to reach the ground, you will actually have to calculate the descent rate at various altitudes and perform an integration to determine the total time. Now, this concludes the treatment of climbing and descending flight. Next time I will summarize all results related to climbing and descending flight.